esteemed guests, faculty, and members, and all uh, your students who are both present uh, online as well as offline. So uh, it is with a great pleasure and honor that uh, we have gathered here today for this special lecture on the role of youth in conservation and climate action organized by the Centre for Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Pixie Bharat itself. So, uh, when speaking of Pixie Bharat's perspective on environment, it would be likely uh, centering around policy development that prioritizes sustainability and environmental <coughs> conservation, and this could involve promoting renewable energy sources, implementing eco friendly practices in industries, encouraging afforestation, and advocating for policies that protect natural resources. And there is there could also be a focus on creating awareness about the importance of environmental conservation and encouraging individuals and communities to adopt eco friendly lifestyles. So uh, and uh, I would like to uh, uh, welcome uh, Dr. Moshini Bhattacharya, uh, in charge of uh, Center for Channels and Mass Communication and a member uh, and a member of DC Bharat itself, Vishu Bharati, uh, to share her uh, thoughts. I would like to welcome, please welcome Dr. Moshini Bhattacharya. So, uh, before going to the next stage of the uh, event, I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Anand Penhurdar and Professor uh, P.K. Pati on the dais, please. So we all are honored and delighted to have Mr. Anand Tenbarger here today for this lecture. And uh, we are thankful to Professor Akbar Paji, Professor and Head of the Department, Environmental Studies Department, that he has kindly agreed to chair this session. So I would like to uh, request our PhD students, Sarushi Rondul and Abhuti Bhattacharya, to stay traditional reception to our guests. Thank you so much, Mrs. Shakriti. <coughs> As a member of the Vixi Bharat Cell of Vishwabharati, uh, I'm happy to welcome you all to this important lecture. We have been organizing a lot of uh, activities under the Vixi Bharat Cell of Vishwabharati, but as the head leadership of Dr. Nibar Chah Shah, who is the convener of this Vixi Bharat Cell, we are in Vishwabharati. But <coughs> on Climate action or on, on this zone of conservation and climate action, maybe we um, were trying to conceptualize this program. Then we were thinking, actually, we did not do anything so far on environment and climate, which is very, very important. So, we all are aware of it, especially we have come to know about it more effectively from last night when we got the um, Notice from the government that we have to change our class schedule from 9.30 to 6, 6 p.m., 9.30 in the morning to 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., just because of the extreme heat. So we all, we all actually, uh, we all are the stakeholders of this entire process, entire journey on the road ahead. And at this moment, 
We have got Mr. Adam Pemberton here in Vishnu Bharati to talk about it. And this is all of movement conservation and climate action. As we all know that in the university, university is the place where we can actually nurture a lot of young minds, young people. So, and because of this date, many of our students, they could not join us uh, here in this hall. So that's why immediately Dr. Dimajal Shah, he uh, organized a, 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 an online session for the students and for the faculty, those who will be joining us. Uh, from their home. So, with these few words, uh, I want Mr. Anand Tenghardkar to take the dance. Mr. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. Uh, uh, I'll try to give a brief introduction. So, uh, so uh, Mr. Adam Kenneker is founder and CEO of Sprouts. He's an ecologist, social entrepreneur, author, motivational speaker, and he's a certified international. In, uh, international zoo educator and he's a professional teacher, trainer, and history faculty. And he has an MSc in wildlife biology and headed the environmental sciences department in the prestigious The Room School at Delhi. He regularly contributes to newspapers and travel magazines as a columnist and has published over 650 popular and scientific articles. Way back in 2000, he had designed India's first environmental management post for MBAs. In 1995, he established a well known eco tourism and consulting company, Sprouts, and, and uh, uh, is its CEO. Uh, Sprouts is conducting different projects like uh, butterfly gardens, terrace farms, documenting biodiversity as well as camps and tracks for schools, colleges, housing colonies, and villages. He is also the founder and director of the Associated Con Conservation NGO, Sprouts Environment Trust. And uh, so I would uh, like to welcome Sir on the dais to present your uh, deliberation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and it's my honor and privilege to be speaking at uh, Vishwabharati University. Uh, as an educator, I think uh, this place is like the Holy Grail. It's, it's like sacred ground where so much of knowledge in all forms, whether it's through science, it's through arts, literature, music, theater, is uh, promoted to people. And environment uh, education or environment work also can be communicated in all these forms. So I would like to have an interactive session with you all. Uh, so my first question is, how many of you all have carried your mobile charger with you? Okay, if you can, a raise of hands. Mobile charger, how many of you? Okay, a few. Wallets, money purse. All that everybody has carried? Okay, right. So are we doing some money interaction over here at this point? Oh, but somewhere you might have had to do, right? Are we charging our phones just now? No, we're not. But yet, as a backup, we are carrying our, you know, chargers. Uh, deodorants, perfumes, deodorants. Some, some people, yeah. Bottle of water. Your own re refillable bottle of water. Yeah. Now, this is very important. This is very important. You know how much part of your body is water? 70%. Uh, when we use the word, phrase Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, the entire world is my home, actually a human body is an exact representation of the earth. The percentage of the land and the percentage of the water which is there in the earth is almost the same as what is there in our body. Did you ever realize that? Or ever think of that? That we are a micro part of the earth. 20-21% bones, 
and flesh and about 70% water. But carrying this water becomes too heavy. Right? We look for sources otherwise where we can, you know, get water and utilize it. Uh, since this talk is about action, conservation action and climate action, can we start with one action just now? Yeah? There are two fans or three, four fans over there which I think can be put up. What do you think? Can we start with that action? Since I moved you all in the front, I'm trying to show you as to how we can reduce our resource use. Right? So if those fans are switched off, two things happen. First is electricity saved. Second is electricity bill is saved. Okay. And third is sorry, noise level goes down. And 300 people who are displaced to make a dam will not get displaced. We would like to make dams for electricity. We have to move villages. Maybe just switching off those four fans can actually prevent a village being moved. Did we ever think about that? That very small actions that we do can have very, very far reaching impacts. That is called in physics as the butterfly effect. The word is butterfly effect. Means like when a butterfly flaps a wing over here, you think the world changes? Do you think when a butterfly flaps a wing, does it create a wave? Can you see the sound now? I can speak lower? Yes? I can probably do it without the mic also. So do you see how much this is called white noise? It's actually increasing our blood pressure. So there is, these are small, small actions that we can do to bring about the change. Maybe the temperature might go up from say 24 degrees to 26 degrees. It may not go up, you know, up to 40 degrees like it's outside. But yet it's manageable, right? Is that, is that manageable? Yeah? Okay. Now the second thing is that how many of you all carry an extra cloth bag in your bag? Board. I always, almost always have at least one spare cloth bag. So that whenever I, you know, you might want to buy something at any point of time. And if I open this and show you, it's got oil stains also. But I can wash it, I can reuse it. It's not, of course, for the display. I'm not going for a fashion show carrying this bag. But yet, is it a useful thing? Yeah? Please try and invite these small, small changes in your uh, lifestyle. The second thing I liked today at least especially is that you are all wearing cotton, light colored clothes, right? From a heat perspective, wearing cream colored, wearing white colored, non-colored clothes, clothes which did not need to be specially dyed. But if you then you have bleached your clothes to make it look white or use indigo, then again it has an impact because colored clothes one black colored sari or shirt or trouser needs 15 times more water than a plain white colored cloth. Right? And cotton. I'm also wearing a cotton shirt, a cotton trouser. Cotton versus synthetic. Synthetic clothes don't breathe easily. <coughs> you know, fashion tends to bring in a lot of synthetic material like nylon, rayon, and uh, other lycra, etc. It seems fashionable, but it is affecting your body. Your body doesn't breathe as easy. And washing and maintaining that is also very difficult. It can catch fire very easily also. So there are other risks that are there. Okay. So uh, I think we should all give ourselves what we call as a forest clap. You know what is a forest clap? A clap that dead people can hear. It's like this. Can you all give yourself a big clap for switching the lights and fans off? Yeah. So how many of you know sign language over here? Yeah. Right. So this is thank you. Right. So I'm saying thank you to all of you. And this is sorry. I think we all need to say sorry to the earth and thank you to each other. That at least you are and to the college that they are organizing events like these. The morning event and this is not a separate thing. You know, gender and Climate action is not different. Everybody needs to have this kind of an awareness. Okay. So coming to the word youth. 
uh, what is your idea? What is the definition of youth? Who's a youth? Not young in the mind like me. <coughs> what what is the technical definition of youth? What United Nations has defined or what the government has decided? What what age group would you call a person as in the youth segment? 82? Okay, close. So the UN defines it as 18 to 20, 4 years, 25 years. But we can extend that to 35 uh, for all practical purposes. 18 to 35. Actually, it can even be up from 16 onwards. In some countries, 16 is considered an age where people can drive, etc. Uh, in our country, we can drive first, vote first, but drink alcohol later. Or maybe drink alcohol first and vote later. Some, some big decisions are taken at very, very different and wrong ages. Point is that everybody who drinks water should be concerned about water. Everybody who breathes the air should be concerned about the air. So environmentalists are not only people who have a degree like sir in environmental sciences. Environmentalists should be every person who takes benefits from your mind. Would you agree? Yes, if you eat food, then you should be concerned about food. If you drink water, then you should be concerned about water. If you get affected by the heat, then you should be concerned about the heat. And then the action also should be taken by all of us. Right? So in this picture, what can you see quickly? What, what, what are the stories that you can see? See, pictures are supposed to stay. You are a communication student, so these pictures have to say a thousand words. But at least give you a few words for them. Otherwise, the pictures are failing. Sir, so the first one is in the schools, maybe. Okay, uh, that's a picture on the right. Yeah, yeah. The, they are planting trees or some kind of activity is going on. Right, so it's an urban gardening workshop, indoor urban gardening workshop for school children. Okay, what's the one on the left on the second? On the top left. Sorry? What, what is this clothes that they are wearing? Are they going to go and play volleyball or? It's cycling here, yes. So this is a group of people, me included, who cycled from Goa to Bombay. Everyone goes to Goa for party. I don't know, there are places over here people must be going to party. But people from Bombay, everyone goes to Goa to have a good time. But we went to Goa to cycle back 700 kilometers in a period of seven, five days. And there were boys, girls, young people, senior people. The senior most person, lady, was 57 and there was a uh, male member who was 67 years old. And in five days, very comfortably, we managed to cycle. The youngest member was 14 years old. 700 kilometers in five days. Very easily. But then we used cars, we used motorcycles, we don't use our own energy. See, human energy is where we burn our calories, right? And we don't give out too much of methane and other pollutants, carbon dioxide, etc. Whereas when you burn fossil fuel, petrol, diesel, CNG, then there's a lot of pollution. And it occupies a lot of space, unless you're using a single bus. But the energy that we gain by cycling, one can easily cycle up to a thousand kilometers in a week, very, very easily. How many of you have cycled? I think on a campus I've seen a lot of people cycling. Yeah, your own cycles, geared cycles or non geared cycles? Yeah. Geared cycles? Yeah, battery operated cycles? No. The black ones, the big ones, non geared ones, anybody? No? Okay, non geared ones. Right. right. So it's important, you know, that we have to use our own gears, it's good for our fitness. I, I'm a, I go to the gym, I, I do believe in gym, but if you cycle, if you walk, right now we are all wearing, how many of you have smart watches, which measure your blood pressure, your sleep, etc. You have how many foot steps you have taken, right? Thousand, I have a 10,000 steps goal, daily goal. It doesn't happen always, but if it happens, that's a good thing as well, right? Okay, what about below, the two other things below? Any idea? Those are some uniform staff. Those are forest guards. We had trained for wildlife conservation and protection. And these are 
young researchers, uh, research scholars from various fields, from law, from medicine, from wildlife, from environment, from chemistry. We taught them techniques of collecting data. Do you all do research? Any of you all involved in research? Yes? Yeah? Okay. When you buy a shirt or when you buy a mobile phone, do you do research? Do you buy a laptop? You do research? Research is not just for a master's or a PhD. Research is done by every person all the time. We are checking details, we are checking information, but sometimes there are some good techniques that we can learn to do research. Go to move a little faster now from there. Yeah. Uh, quickly to look at the Indian scenario. Uh, the situation is we, pro we are now the world's most populated country, right? We are 1.41 million people, again okay, increasing as we speak. Uh, but our population is likely to double in 30 years. So we we'll probably have, now we are one eighth of the world or one seventh of the world. We we'll probably be one fourth of the world then. India, Indian population could be one fourth of the number of people in the world. Do we have one fourth of the resources of the world? We have only 4% of the resources of the world. So on 4%, we are talking of 25% of the world's population surviving. Do you think that's a great scenario to get towards? No? So one thing that we need to do is make adoption much easier in this country. How many of you all have heard or thought about adoption laws? You know, people buy, they say free love cars. Nowadays the word second hand is not used. Free love cars. Have you heard of that? Where somebody is already complete free love clothes, free used clothes. In, in UK and all there are shops like that. Yeah? Thrift shops, right? Where you can buy. But I think there is there are close to at least 70 million children who are born and who are orphaned in this country. Do you think by not giving birth to new children and adopting those kids, will we be contributing to climate you know, mitigation? Less resources being utilized. I'm not saying actively don't have children. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you can have children, but you can also adopt. Adoption laws are quite difficult at this point of time in our country. And we need to all, again, as you know, future journalists, you all need to start writing and talking about it a little more. Second thing is that we have, in terms of land resources, you'll see that forests 20%, some states like Arunachal Pradesh, like Karnataka. Madhya Pradesh, they are contributing a lot to the forest and Andaman and Nicobar, they've got great forest covers, but there are some states which have got 1%, 1.5% forest cover. So we do have a shortage of resources and huge amount of waste that has been generated. The other thing that we now need to do is actively reduce any single use material, use and throw material. Plates, spoons, glasses, bottles. Try to see that we can have more and more reusable and multiple use resources. Right? I have given up using tissue papers around 30 years ago and I carry two handkerchiefs in my pocket. I find out where the washrooms are, go wash my hands. If it's not there, then I use my kerchief. It might get oil on it. But it's definitely better than tissue paper because for one kilo of tissue paper, you need 32 kgs of wood, which comes from a tree. 32 kgs for one kg of tissue paper and those tissue papers really don't clean your hands. You eventually have to go and use a sanitizer or wash your hands with something. I think that nimbu pani we used to get in the restaurants, the hot nimbu pani, it's funny my dad, who's a perfumer, used to always say that India is a very funny country. That as a welcome gift, we serve synthetic nimbu pani and we wash our hands with original nimbu pani. Isn't that a little confusing for our culture? We talk of culture, so we nimbu ka pani humne pina chahiye aur synthetic se haath dhona chahiye, right? But we use the other way around. We are washing our hands with really good lemon and not drinking it. Okay, so maybe some changes. Using, you know, bringing back the, uh, you know, shikanji or bringing back the belka sarbat, 
bringing back back the aam ka pata traditional things which are there when we did our book launch in bombay uh, we you know in maharashtra we have a what is called as a nota steel or a brass container with a glass we can refill it or we can get those large containers where people can refill their bottles or glasses from is that possible in all our festivals in all our durga pujas if we decide that no disposable plastic glasses are going to be there in fact you know the terracotta bhar what should we say the mitti ka that is not a eco friendly material it will be shocking for you when was the the oldest terracotta material found and where we have evidence that terracotta has not biodegraded for 7000 years we found it in the harappa and mohenjodaro excavations which was 6 to 7000 years ago the terracotta which was made over there remained in the soil so many years of rain did not disintegrate and that terracotta was made from top soil it was baked and made right so maybe even those unless we reusing it again and again for the diyas or for the you know making dahi if we use it again and again or for cooking that's a different thing but use it once and throw it away that is very good top soil going to waste so plastic and terracotta then doesn't become any different both are going to remain in the system for 1500 to 7000 years okay let's go to the next point this is a scenario in many parts of big cities where mining has destroyed the mountains uh mining is going to increase 500 times more because we need more roads we need more electricity we need more metros and more malls they will need all the minerals that are there and we are going to mine every mountain for that so there's going to be more mining there going to be more displacement people are labor is going to move from place to place so if we start using our resources more and better then you know the impact the overcrowding i was talking to a, a staff who was you know working in the kitchen at the hotel that we are staying and asked him where he is from so he says he is from a nearby village but he has gone and worked in other cities he has worked in delhi he has worked in bombay he has worked in indore but he says mummy daddy abhi na old ho gaye to abhi yahan pe aake reh gaye maine kaha you you done the best thing because now he is managing to utilize his resources the best otherwise he was utilizing resources in indore and he was also managing resources over here he was dividing himself into two parts while he had to run a family and a house there he also had to run a family and house here and then those resources were becoming less here he says i can cycle in 15 minutes i reach home after my work is done in 15 minutes i go back and my parents are very happy i am eating and living the same life that i have grown up to live with so if you are looking for a job i always say keep the radius as 3 kilometers that from where you stay to where you work if it is more than 3 kilometers then shift to a place which is 3 kilometers close to your working place if we travel so much in america companies used to give housing to people which is close to the office so if you leave a company you leave that housing and you go to another company which provides you rent controlled housing over there you know your carbon footprint comes down you heard of the word carbon footprint right okay so over congregation in the big cities more than 50% of people are living in big cities now officially in india and they don't have very high quality of life uh, sustainable development goals please look this up google it and understand it a little more unfortunately the sdgs are a little more focused towards human beings they don't talk about the river that is flowing nearby they don't talk much about the mountains that are there ecosystems the forests and the creatures that live inside that that is not the the focus of sustainable development goals the focus is more human sustenance so there we need to tweak the goals when you say let's say sustainable goal number uh, 14 life below water if that life below water is only to have acher jhol but not that the fishes themselves have to be sustained the fish themselves have a right to life you know soon if the wildlife laws in bangladesh change eating the padmas in spillish would become illegal because it's such an endangered fish so ashtabhi is going to be you're going to create crime on that day if you eat the padmas 
Hilsa because it's a very very highly endangered fish. Overfishing and degradation has led to that fish come to the brink of extinction. So we need to start thinking that okay, I want to consume it, but want to keep it for perpetuity. And I think universities like this talk about that. They talk about that we will save, we will utilize, and we will continue it for future as well. So that philosophy is very important and ingrained in our own culture. Uh, second thing is that what are the key elements we should think about? We must make human needs. Of course, human sustenance is important. But also at that point of time, equity and equality should be kept at the forefront. That somebody is getting a lot, 50 times more, and somebody is getting only 0.5%. That can't be the case. It happens between us also. Uh, have you heard of, please write this name down and keep and Google him up. He's called Robert Green. Rob Green. This person has only 17 things in his ownership. He owns only 70 things, clothes, whatever. You know, he he just gave away everything from his house. And he sleeps on a carry mat, you know, a yoga mat. When he has to go somewhere, he borrows somebody's cycle and he returns it back to that person. He did an entire America trip with $59 in his pocket. And when he came back, he had $112. He went to somebody's house and he said, I will wash your clothes, I will cook your food, I will do gardening with you. And he created an entire film and photography by saying, can you please take this photo and email it to me? I don't have a phone. I don't have a camera. So from your phones, he took pictures and he said, please email this to the, this video or this photo to my email address. And then he put all that together and again bartered with a filmmaker, bartered with a photographer to put it together. He helped, he gave them, you know, blue vegetables and fruits in somebody else's farm and gifted it to the film editor. And that is the, again, old cultural system, right? Before money came into existence, barter was the system. Even between friends, we barter all the time, isn't it? So everything cannot be on a monetary system. Do you agree? I think we, when we start valuing things, brothers and sisters, barter siblings and friends have a lot of barter, right? Okay. So that is the other thing. Secondly, think global, see what the world is doing, but act local. Don't copy Dubai, don't copy Singapore, don't copy China for the wrong things or America. Take the good things from there. We ourselves, look at the Japanese people. Japanese people are the most modern people of the world, but at the same time, they are the most culturally ingrained people. They always sit on the floor. They always bend till their back, literally till their belly and wish each other. They are, they keep cleanliness. Wherever they go, children first come and clean their classrooms. If a football match, they went for a football match to Italy and they saw that all the audience left and they left a whole bunch of garbage. So all these Japanese people went there and cleaned it up and handed it over to the Italians and the Italians felt ashamed. They said, otherwise you will think that the Japanese came and dirtied this place. So we want to leave the place better. Is that not culture? Where you leave the place better than what you found? So then everyone says Japanese people are cultured. I think that is something that also young people need to... See, I'm saying that if your mind changes now, you will change your family. You will change the institution that you work with. If you start a company, you will set that as a company motto. In my office, there is one rule. Food will not be wasted in the plate. You don't want it, give it to somebody else, put it in the fridge, will, somebody will eat it later. Any, not a single piece, your, your plate has to be sparkling clean. You should be able to see your face in it. Because the farmer has spent months in the heat, bent over, growing that food, and then you criminally throw in America, there are people who jump into garbage bins. It's called dumpster diving. And they go and pick out food from there and eat. Can you imagine how horrible that is? To go into a garbage bin to find food. Entire packets and packets of food. We sandwiches are eaten, little pieces are thrown. Juice is drunk, thumbs up, whatever we drink and we leave it. It's fashionable, you think. So it is bad for the environment. Please eat till the last bit and praise the person who's cooked it for you or thrown it for you. Right? I think that's what, what is a part of our own culture. Okay. Uh, last point I mentioned, last two points I mentioned over here is design thinking. Uh, 
This is something that needs to come in, that new innovative solutions have to come through design thinking. Any problem can be solved through design thinking. And secondly, take a restorative approach and not an exploitative approach. Uh, certain things that we need to stop using, I've mentioned a bit about it. Plastic bags, I think they are so 100 years old, that thought process. Then DDT and Declofenac, these are chemicals which, have, which were there in expensive use that need to be going away. Fossil fuel private cars. I think car pooling and using public transportation. Countries, prime ministers and presidents travel by trains with no security. I think that is a sign of safety. That is a sign of development when the most powerful person can travel in public transport. Then it is really equal, I would say. Not where the citizens are waiting while 35 cars of politicians are passing. Right? That is not equitable. So I think you know public transportation, more and more investment in public transportation, more and more will come up demanding. In Calcutta, I remember I think one of the uh, situations was where cycling tracks were asked for and the commissioner said that sorry, he wrote back saying sorry cycling tracks cannot be made. And then people got agitated and hundreds of letters and hundreds of rallies were done. That idea was given by the commissioner. He said till citizens don't demand for it, Till you don't create a human cry. If I try to do something, I will be opposed. Because cars are going to be removed from the road. The car lobby, the petrol lobby is very strong. But my company CEO, have you heard of the Future Group? Big Bazaar, etc. Future Group. My company CEO used to cycle 35 kilometers every day from South Bombay to North Bombay. The CEO of a company used to cycle. And he used to come to office in his cycling shorts, he used to go to the washroom, press it up, wear his formals, and same thing while going back, he will again get back into his cycling clothes and cycle back. So, intelligence is thinking what can be sustained, what can I do for a long period of time. Petrol and diesel is going to get more and more expensive. Traffic congestion, earlier it just take one hour to, to work, then we get to two hours, then it will become three hours. But COVID has shown us that work from home can happen. And I think this whole concept of water parks and rain dance, rain dance should be done in the rainy season. When the rain comes, please do the rain dance, not in the summer months. Water parks, you know, those things are really bad for the environment, really bad for the communities also. And young people, it's, it's usually said that young people want these things. I think young people are probably not thinking them. Also, I'm going to jump to biodiversity, which is my area of work, is that human beings are generally removed from biodiversity and nature. People who are tribals, people who are you know, farmers, they are very closely connected with nature. Now imagine if you and I had to go out in this sun and cultivate, there is water available. So if I have to till at this time in the, in the sun, we'll be like, okay, we'll do it at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yesterday while coming, I saw that at 3.45 people were already going to the field. It just makes sense, right? Like a university has changed the time to 7 o'clock. There are three situations in which I remember this happened. One was when Uttarakhand, uh, we were part of the Uttarakhand movement, when the state was shut, but the kid, we couldn't send the kids back. So our school used to start at 6 o'clock, and by the time 8.30, 9 o'clock, when the whole world is waking up at outside, the school used to be closed and the kids were playing and music and art and all. So to the outside world, there was nothing happening. And again, at 6 o'clock in the evening, the school used to start and used to run till 9 o'clock. So we had to adjust that. Second is when COVID happened. I think COVID is a climate change disease. You need to understand what COVID did to businesses, what COVID did to human psychology. Did you all enjoy staying at home so much? Yes, some people are saying yes, some people are saying no. Yes? Yeah, so it depends on, you know, people's uh, sociability or uh, some people enjoyed it, some people did not. So we work a lot with children, with young people. We start with them very early. We use theatre, we use music. We also look at cities as spaces for biodiversity. Only sanctuaries and national parks and forests are not places for biodiversity. Even right within your city, you can have lots of butterflies, you can have lots of snakes, you can have lots of birds. In case of Bombay, we also have the blue whale, which is found passing, migrating through Bombay. So when we make infrastructure,
when a new bridge is coming up, do we create space for a blue whale to migrate to Bombay? Or through the Hooghly River, there are dolphins over here. Right? So have we thought about the dolphins in the river or the turtles which are there? Right? In Odisha, for example, you know, on Gahir Matha and Rishikulia and Puri, these areas, there are thousands, millions of turtles which come and nest. Now, if there is a resort which comes there, although there is going to be money, but then these creatures, they are going to lose their complete uh, use. What is the use of that butterfly? What does the butterfly do? Why is it important to protect butterflies? Pollination, yes. That's one. They give us our fruits. What about that bat in the center? The fruit bats do pollination. Your papayas and your... Uh, they also do seed dispersal. Things like chikpu and lychee, the seeds are dispersed by bats. But this is an insect eating bat. An insect eating bat eats 600 mosquitoes and flies per hour. For one hour, in a single night, five to 6,000 mosquitoes and flies are eaten. What is more dangerous, a fly or a mosquito? Okay, how many for fly and how many for mosquitoes? Okay, so mosquitoes can probably sing like Himesh Reshami on your ears and can possibly you know, pass one disease per mosquito species, so either dengue or malaria. But mosquitoes are less dangerous than flies. Flies can carry 40 different kinds of diseases. A single fly can be a carrier of 40 different kinds of uh, diseases. So actually covering our food and hygiene is far more important. So if there is a restaurant where there is lots of flies, there's possibility of you getting a stomach upset and that should be a bigger concern. And this <coughs> single bat is eating thousands of insects, keeping your health safe and even safe from mosquitoes and dengue and other things. So people are scared of these bats. They don't understand the role of these bats. Okay. Anybody can identify any one of these octopus? Okay, great. There's a butterfly there. No, that's not a butterfly. It's a close relative, close cousin of a butterfly. It's a moth, yes. So, since we are sitting in Bengal, I thought that maybe you guys might know a little bit about this. Have you heard of tussle silk? Tussel silk, yeah, tussel silk saris are made, right? So this is a relative of the tussel silk moth. Yeah. There's a... Uh, there's not two people. There is one picture of that. Very good. That there's a picture plant on the top, which is an insect eating plant. It's an insectivorous plant, which is found in Meghalaya. Okay, uh, I'll quickly tell you the one on the left is called Sarpaganda or Rogalpia serpentina. It's a very highly medicinal plant used against leukemia, blood cancer. Next to that is the pitcher plant. Next to that is the emperor moth from very similar like Tassasil. They, they are, you know, the uh, cocoons which are made, they can also be made for silk. Next to that, the one on the green and one on the right side, blue and yellow, they are called lantern flies. Lantern bug, they are actually kinds of bugs. Nobody really knows what those long trunks are for, what do they do, whether they are disease carriers. They are found in dense evergreen forests. But when I showed this picture to my friends who are students of fashion, they said an entire, so every creature's body, you know, wing patterns is very different. Have you heard of uh, Bandhani print? Yeah, so you know, Gujaratis can make Agra Cholis in these patterns. The color combinations are so amazing that new designs can be created by looking at the patterns of combination of these insects. Uh, next to that is a house centipede. This is found in villages. Uh, they live in Kaudang area, you know, houses which are made in Kaudang and mud. It's not a dangerous centipede, centipede like the other one which have got venom. Below that are flamingos. Uh, next to that is a sea anemone, which is an animal which can't move, which is stuck at one place. And next to that, it's not very clear, but there's something called as a cowfish. Cowfish is a vegetarian fishes. They eat algae. All fishes are not non vegetarian or insect eaters. Right? And next to that is a, uh, another insectivorous bat. Okay? Those bats use echolocation. We have developed sonar, you know, which is used in warfare to find where uh, fighter planes are, etc. 
that is used by that. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail, but basically, the earth that we are sharing, we are sharing it with other creatures. They also have a right to live with them. And people like us who are more intelligent, who are more learned, who are more privileged, we have to fight for them. Can a leopard go to court and say, please save my forest, please save my rights? Can a frog or can all the frogs go to the police station and file a complaint that somebody came and put, you know, some pesticide in my water in the pond that I was, or detergent, you know, all the washing, somebody emptied their washing machine in my pond. Can they do that? So who is going to talk about this? Who is going to focus and concentrate on these problems? There is only planet A. There is no planet B. Right? It's their planet, it's my planet, it's your planet. It's everyone's planet. They are talking of going to Mars, but when we have got such a great planet A, you know what is the average temperature on the planet on Earth? 17 degrees Celsius. Actually, if you see the climate, the temperature is colder than this AC. The average temperature on the Earth. The highest is 57 degrees Celsius and the lowest is minus 47 degrees Celsius. We have like 150 degrees up and down. But in that life we can sustain, the average of that is 17 degrees Celsius. It's very, it's, it's a very, very sweet spot, I can say, where people can, and all these creatures can also survive. Uh, we say that, you know, human hand is a dangerous hand, but today in the morning I said that human hand can also be a helpful hand. If all of us decide to do one, one action every day, uh, in the book that we've written, we have got 600 actions. So each of us can take even one action towards climate, that's like a billion action a day. And I think then we can easily bring about strong climate change. Uh, so you see a little bit of statistic that we need to understand that globally, most countries, Japan, many of the European countries, they all are growing old. They have many, many, many older people. As compared to that in India, we have a much bigger growing youth population. So actually, almost 60 to 65 percent of India's population is in the youth segment. There are two things likely over here. One is that we are going to really grow as an economy. We are going to be a superpower because all people are going to be employed and working and with resources. The other possibility, there is no other possibility. Do you think we have the choice to look at the other possibility that we'll have a civil war, we'll all be fighting for one job? Do you think we want to go to even that possibility where resources are short, so short that there are 15 seats in police bharti and there are 75,000 people applying for that? Or there is one, one research scholar position and 30,000 applications for that. Right? So we need to start innovating. We all need to start becoming entrepreneurs and innovate ourselves. Okay. Uh, it's very important to say no. When somebody gives you a plastic bag, you should return that bag and say, I will carry the bananas in my bag. I will carry the bananas in my hand. It's already covered in a container, right? Nowadays, you see oranges are covered in cling foil. But orange already has a cover on top of it. Bananas are covered in cling foil. For what? You know, the banana skin has got the highest amount of pesticides. There is no creature in the world who can penetrate and go and destroy your bananas. In fact, they're making biopesticides using banana skin. So why try to put another synthetic thing which is going to be immediately taken and thrown away? Watermelon, same thing. Watermelons are so well protected. Why do you need to cover it with foil or plastic or anything like that? Right? So there is a lot that we can say no. But for all that, I always say we need to become a team. If you uh, Do we have a nature club? To come? Nature or environment club? Would you want to be a part of a nature or environment club which can take up activities across? Yeah? So I think that's something that you all should also think about as youth, that starting a nature or environment club and segregation of waste. How many of you all have a compost pit at, or compost bin at home? Compost bin, where you buy, you know, organic material is composted. Yeah? It is very important, you know, uh, to have a compost bin and see, these are considered to be modern thoughts, futuristic thoughts. So in your household, 70% of the waste in your garbage bin 
is biodegradable. You can turn it into compost. So as young people, I think these are the things of the future that you should try and invite. Uh, do you all have cleanup drives in the campus? You all do, you all do have cleanup drives? So please look at the kind of garbage. That is one research that you can do, is to segregate and see what is the kind of garbage that is there. How much of plastic is there? How much of glass is there? How much of metal is there? How much of biodegradable material is there? Is there any hazardous material? Unfortunately, all this is getting mixed up together. But to do this, all this, you need leadership. Like, ma'am took the leadership for this 25 year anniversary event. Had she not thought about it, do you think automatically, organically it's going to happen? Or somebody decided to start this university, right? Somebody took the leadership idea like that. So there could be multiple kinds of leaders. Do you think she was the only leader in this whole activity? Somebody else wrote out maybe the script or somebody else did the exhibitions. Somebody else, you know, organized the students. Somebody did the songs. So there could be multiple leaders. A single leader is not always required. Young people, we always say, or everyone is looking for followers on Instagram, on whatever. We, of course, a leader can't be without followers. But just for likes and thumbs up, I think that's not going to achieve anything. You know, tweeting, just tweeting about something is not going to bring about an action. Give a missed call for saving rivers. That's not going to happen. The river is not going to save itself just because you gave a missed call. Or just because of a post on some website, uh, what, something.org, that you go and, you know, make a campaign, campaign.org. Do you think the forest fires are going to stop automatically because 30,000 people signed and said the forest fire should stop? Does somebody need to really go and stop the forest fire on the mountain? Yeah? Do you all have forest fires around over here? Fires which are coming out to the field? So who is an equal leader? Is it a politician? Can it be a politician? Can it be a politician? Yes? Yeah, if a politician is educated enough and intelligent enough and thinks of the environment, I think that's going to be great. Can it be a religious leader? Yes? Can it be a religious leader? Re very recently, uh, the Pope, the last Pope, wrote a book, 250 page book, on kind of activities that the Christian community should do to protect the environment. And they said that the Christmas script that you do, talk about water saving, talk about, you know, segregation, use your medium to talk about conservation. So a religious leader can do it if they want to, right? A movie star, yeah, there are many movie stars. Have you heard of Leonardo DiCaprio? So he is a UN ambassador for biodiversity and climate change. And he, of course, had to study things himself talk to scientists, talk to people, but because he has a public following after Titanic, whether his career sounds or no, nobody knows, but he's really taken his name and has started to use Pixabola. So I used to say that, you know, let's say Sachin Tendulkar or Saurav Gamboli say, I bat for the bats. If Saurav Gamboli says, I bat for bats, and bats are important, they need to be protected. Do you think bat conservation will become important? Can, can such role models be there? You know, unfortunately, people advertise for good cars, people advertise for other polluting and, you know, terrible things, and we are very happy that they are doing that. We buy those products because those film stuff, I don't think that's the right thing, right? So why do you say, oh, I have asthma, but for your marriage, if firecrackers are going to be burned, then please don't go and see their films, right? Or if somebody goes and shoots animals, and it's the most grossing, today we had a whole discussion about the role of you know film stars and filmmakers, we have to boycott such people. These are wrong role models that young people are following. That in their origin, in their lives, if they're going and hunting wild animals, then they cannot be our role models. We cannot, you know, mark ourselves on those things. So yeah, there are people over here. We do talk about Gandhiji's principles, we do talk about you know Ravindran Tagore's principles. We are following those, right? 100 years later, also, they are very, very relevant. Can this young girl be a eco-leader? Yeah. So this girl had come with me for a camp in Uttarakhand when she was five years old. Actually, all the mothers who come from Delhi, they were all lawyers. Okay, role of women. These mothers decided to bring the, their daughters and sons for a nature camp with us to Uttarakhand. And 
I I had hair on my head at that point. I was in dance class right now, but uh, it was it was quite hot at that time, and I had a little bit of sweat on my head, and a butterfly came and sat on my head. And till we were walking, because in the morning it was very cold. It was four and a half degrees Celsius. So this kid had been woken up early for bird watching. We trekked up the mountains. She was constantly complaining since that time. Earlier night she had to eat parathas when she wanted maggi or pasta. So you know, and there was no electricity. We were living in lantern lights. So she was scared. She was irritated, and her mother had woken up early. Just cribbing, cribbing, cribbing. Now when this butterfly came and sat on my head, she said that I also want the butterfly to sit on me. So I said, you know, because you are not a friend of nature, this butterfly is not coming and sitting on you. <laughs> That's what I said. I told her lie. So I told her you have to promise that you will be a friend of nature. And in our times, how do children? How you know how children used to promise? At least in our area, to do that. I don't know. We used to do. I don't. That we used to lick our hands and close. So we used to do that and close your eyes and say yes, whatever you want to promise. So I made her do that, and the butterfly came and sat on her hand. Now what happened over here? This girl is now an environmental lawyer. She did her masters in environmental law from Bangalore, and now she's fighting for environment. One small lie, of course, don't tell lies. That's not the point. The point is that you can, if you start early, if the ideas of conservation, if the love for nature, a small change about something, a plantation activity, or rescuing of a snake, or killing of a snake, or killing of a pangolin, or something. If you, if a child feels that oh, I could have helped this, if a tree is being cut, just yesterday. Some thirty big trees were cut in Pune city, and a child, a sixth standard girl, has started a campaign for protecting the the trees of Pune. And now that campaign has gone so viral, she just you know sat down, wrote something in her diary, and she showed it to her mom, and she said, "I want you to you know you keep on putting things on Instagram and this and the other. Please put this up." You know those trees were so amazing. I used to stand up on the bus stop over there. They were such great shade. There were bird nests on that. I saw crow babies over there. Now all that has been broken. All the crow babies are on the floor. She felt so strong, and she has created a movement. And that campaign is now going viral. It's already reached the commissioner with forty-five thousand ideas. So I think a change a leader can be even a child like that. This lady has planted. She is a vegetable vendor. She, she was an 84, 80-year-old lady. She used to go to sell vegetables. When the road widening activity happened, the trees were cut, and the children who used to walk to school one and a half kilometers, they used to have to. Many of them did not even have chappals in their feet. So she started feeling bad that these kids have to walk barefoot to school in the sun. So she started planting trees, and she got Padma Shri three years ago. She's planted planted more than a lakh trees and grown them. So if a 80 plus year old lady can do that, what is your and my excuse, right? I think we have to, you know, we don't need to be like these Power Rangers and X Men and whatever to have these kind of actions, you know. Uh, we have to be sensitive. We have to take the step from sensitization to action. It's very very important to you know take collective actions, do clean up drives in local ecosystems. I was just looking at the canal. Which you cross into when you're coming over here. I think start by cleaning those places up, because you know that is the entry, let's say, into your campus, and that's the first vision that people get. Then maybe take those steps to you know that okay, let's see how not only what we see inside, but also what we see around. How we can bring about that change that is there. If you know something now today, you know something. Please, I request you put one small social media post about it. Everyone who can take this action, one small social media post that this is the action that we can take, or this is the action that I'm going to take myself. Like pledge yourself. Okay, I'm going to not do this. Like I gave up. I was a great motorcyclist. I used to travel, you know, motorcycle up to Himalaya here and there. I gave up motorcycling 27 years ago. Either cycling or public transport or walking. Okay, I do treks of up to 300 kilometers also. So you have to decide and use, you know, chances and opportunities. I think Durga Bodies are great places where environment education. There are a lot of photographers. I'm sure each of you all have now a camera. We will skip this and move ahead. Restoration of habitats, creating butterfly gardens, creating bird parks, 
you know, setting up, you know, or uh, terrace gardens that are there. Documentation through your mobile phones. If you see a bird, if you see a butterfly, if you see an ant, take pictures, put it up on the social media. There are groups, there are websites now available where you can identify and other people can also share. So start documenting the entire campus. Like this, you can start creating posters. You can have competitions of these. Uh, involve more people in rescue. Are there snake rescuers? Any, anybody who's a snake rescuer? You all know over here. So one of your former students uh, from the zoology department who's now working, so after studying here, he's now working with the zoo in Jamshedpur. Okay, so he was an alumnus from here. He was a snake rescuer. I will ask him. He knows about 10 15 snake rescuers. I can send the detail. So, you know, at least you should see to it that the snakes in this area don't get killed if they get rescued and whatever. So, it should not be that in the past there was someone. There has to be constantly a chain of people who can do the same activity. Right? Okay. Uh, these are my, these are the eco leaders that I have trained. This is my gang. These are my children. Right? Over the last 30 years, Sprout started in 1995. And various people have been trained, and till date we are in touch with them. Some of them are now associate professors at Cornell, at uh, you know in, in the Institute of Science. Some of them are co-authors with me in my book. Now they themselves are working in other organizations, or they have started their own organizations. So they have created the circle of influence, and now they are working. Some of them are teaching. You saw, if you see below the exhibition poster, that person who's teaching over there, Nikhil Desoria, is there in the picture over here. See the one with the brown t-shirt on the second row. He is now an associate professor of zoology and he is a PhD and he's teaching in the college. So you know what you start off, you know, sometimes your students can go way ahead of you and they can take those actions. They can be much bigger influencers, you know, than what you have managed to. So participate in actionism, not only activism, not only just Twitter, tweet kar diya matlab ho gaya, reshare kar diya matlab ho gaya. I don't think that works necessarily. So this is our protest. For 12 years, we were protesting against the metro yard in the RA forest. And of course, we could not succeed 100%, but we managed to get at least 800 acres protected in that, through that process. Uh, yeah, train, train yourself and train others. Celebrate responsibly. Light, noise, think of other people. You know, involve other people. You are enjoying, but somebody else might be suffering. Can we use that money? for helping other creatures, for helping other people. I think that is also very important. Can we switch off the lights of the pandals or the reduce the check, take a decibel meter and check how much the noise levels are coming to. So these are small, small things. If we just reduce our level, I'm not saying don't you know, celebrate, but can we check how much of firecrackers, how much of wastage is happening, etc. Okay. Self-checking is the best way. Uh, now there are recycled toilet papers, those called as brown toilet papers, where wood is not used, they are non-wood based, they are from either you know, uh, agricultural waste or sometimes even recycled material are there. Then cotton sanitary pads, menstrual cups are there, all sanitary pads are non-biodegradable at this point of time, there are very small number of reuse and biodegradable sanitary pads, but we've done tests on them. They yet do contain plastic in them. Okay, so that's a very large area where one can contribute. Uh, don't go to malls, but go to farmers markets. Support local artisans and local fishermen. Buy local food. That is what the smallest footprint. If your bananas and mangoes are coming from Portugal or your coffee is coming from Spain, then that is a huge carbon footprint. Dalgona coffees and all are not good for the environment. You know, whatever local thing is being grown. If Assam tea or whatever is the lo local most tea, things are there. When I go to Kashmir, I buy rajma from there, 5 kgs, I make them to small, small packet and gift it to my friends. They say, make it and invite me to have lunch with you all. But they get unique food, the local farmers, you know, they get support also. So one has to try and also, you know, in the earlier days, diapers were, I don't think we grew up with disposable diapers. We are surviving, nothing happened to us. But now this whole, you know, parents have more luggage in disposable diapers then their actual luggage. They carry, they are so paranoid about, you know, how will my child do 40? But we've been doing 40 for, you know, 2 million years now. That's our composting setup. Depending on your house size, you can have a small bucket. Even a broken bucket can do. You don't need to buy a specially new bucket. But please have a lid on top. 
if possible to have a lid make holes all around and compose institutions like these should have segregation color coded bins for plastic separate glass separate metal separate there are standard rules that are there uh, wherever there are blank walls try to have hanging gardens you know you can easily using waste plastic bottles you can create very good hanging gardens even in your houses and buildings it's possible uh as i said eat local help in controlling fires help in rebuilding dams etc check dams actually you know with the forest departments volunteer for them please do not buy wildlife products leathers you know skins etc uh have non disposable like you have this in my now because i was flying otherwise in my bag i also have my own spoon my own fork or my own straw i have a metal straw which i use which i don't take straws from outside so these are you know things also you can carry a container if you are going to eat outside if there is extra food please pack it and bring it back home so these are changes that you can bring about uh, there are bamboo toothbrushes i have seen today that there are cutlery made from biodegradable materials Uh, there is now seed packaging. Of course, is a very age-old thing, but now there is also banana leaf packaging, palm leaf packaging also, which is coming up for maybe momos and other things that are there. Uh, but eco-friendly gifting. Can you see over here? You know what is this? This thing over here. This is a honeycomb. This is made from waste bamboo pieces of bamboo. And they will put together, and honey bees can come and make nests in that. So you can actually hang it and invite honey bees to come to your terraces, etc., to come and actually give it to you. So these kind of new gift, new age gifts are now available to give and gift each other also. So think of those. There are paper pencils, biodegradable pencils, which are there. Pencils which have got seeds in them. There are bird feeders. Anyway, eco tourism. Please think between the two. This is all luxury tourism, which is very very bad for the environment. bad for the community it uses too many resources look at this one one family is using such very large number of resources as a way you can do this this is eco friendly cycling kayaking paragliding you know scuba diving you are not leaving any waste over there you are using your energy you are using your resources stay with the communities anything which is you know uh, community owned home run right home stays you must have got a home stays so support those things will get very very unique things to eat also they made with natural materials so natural artisans natural architects can also grow them uh, this is again the himalaya in nepal etc where we go and stay and finally i've come to the last slide please it's not me it's we i will do it no we will do it you a single person even this presentation could not have been possible without my team they help me put things together sometimes they help coordinate so we are was doing the projection somebody else was doing the coordination so it is we always and i think we is the way to go we are a community species so we all have to you know uh, get into new footsteps you know uh, and leave just footprints and not waste them thank you so much i think so for the insightful session as a direct presentation Uh, and it has been an eye-opening session, and has indeed helped us to understand uh, a step further on how environment requires an immediate attention for our future sustenance, especially from the perspective of you. Now we will have a question and answer session, and I would like the audience to share their thoughts, feedback regarding the presentation, and if you have any questions to ask from Mr. Anand Pendel. please anybody any questions yes yes please send it yes i'll fix it yeah so i'm not sure the you know the side line i'm not in this field you know the the person like that Anyway, my question is this: uh, it is not a question. Can you tell me that? No. I mean, it is that uh, there is any your policy, you know, whatever you think on that. There is so many perspectives, and there is so many things. There is so many characters. There is so many things. We are living 
and actively human beings and human others are living in this sort of things, right? So there is some planning commission in ministry. Can you tell me that you know, there is any sort of you know, plan which is you are one apart from your jurisdictions? jurisdictions. Uh, is there any just give me some examples? Okay, thank you. Yeah. So basically, you're asking whether there are governmental policies or yeah. plans that are there for making climate action. So many cities have started making their regional or city climate action plans. Uh, Bombay has made one, and there are many other cities who are working on these. Yeah, so we, so we data collection, right? Data collection is one way that is there. Also, when uh, public uh, you know hearings happen or when public consultations happen, we do go as expert on that as well. Also, uh, simultaneously, I, as I say, I tell everybody, just take your mobile phone and open to Google, and you'll see the first thing that comes, let's say AQI, nowadays temperature and air quality index. Everywhere that you go, I have started to look at AQI. And I take a screenshot and put it up. See, when public is creating, that is a data that cannot be cheated, you know. So once you start putting it, if, let's say, I'm not saying government, any agency say that AQI is 128. But if the machine in your own hand is showing it is 300, more data sets creating, we get a much finer and refined thing. Same thing with the temperature, heat identified. If we start mapping that, okay, this road has got shade, so it's cooler over here. What is the temperature? 25 degrees, 27 degrees. But these areas which are not having enough shade, where road construction has cut down trees, etc. Once we start mapping that data, it's called the thermal mapping of the city or, or even rural areas. Once we start doing that, or how many cloudy in in blue school we school with our school children? Just a simple thing as to nine o'clock, twelve o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock. Whether it was cloudy, clear sky, sunny, we had a temperature thing, and we used to note that down. We had the ninth and tenth standard students who were learning graph, uh, you know, basic how to make a graph, and that monthly graph data was put up. And then we come to know that whether there are more cloudy days happening or whether there are more sunny days happening whether the temperature is actually going up or reducing. You know, once you start collecting statistics, you yourself start understanding. It's not imaginary that, oh, somebody has said, maybe that is a false data. We have to start becoming data creators as So it is possible, there are policies. We are signatories to the Kyoto Protocol, we are signatories to the Paris Agreement. We are, now we have got something called nationally determined you know, commitments. So how much of reduction of, we say that by, 2050 or 20, whatever, we are going to become carbon neutral. This is not going to happen automatically. The government has created policies. You know, earlier in your fridge, can you tell me what is the coolant in your refrigerator? CFCs? CFCs have been shut 15 years ago. About 10 years ago, a cousin of CFC called XCFC was there. That has also been shut down 10 years ago. Yeah, there is cyclobenzene, cyclohexane. So there are now uh, organic compounds that are there. So even knowing you say, okay, everybody's got a fridge at home, but thanda is say over What is the material used inside that? And how dangerous or good it is. Everyone's fridges have removed that. You know, now there is you like there were Euro norms. Now we have Bharat norms on buses and all it is written Bharat 2, Bharat 3. What is that? These are local norms that have been created for the emissions of cars and buses. CNG buses are coming everywhere, electric vehicles, buses are coming. All the old petrol and diesel buses have been removed. Trucks and why trucks are not allowed in the city in the daytime. So these are norms which have been made and which have been followed very strictly in many places. It's not that, you know, but if citizens drive their field, if I'm going to keep burning plastic, if I'm going to burn tires, then you know those things will not get achieved. So it has to be both ways. Policies can be one way. But then citizen action is equally important. Till I don't understand the problem, till I don't get educated myself, we will not be able to. So there are policies on everything. There's policies on health. How sewer garbage should be there, solid waste management rules to 2016. This is applicable everywhere. But are people following the solid waste management rules? We are eight years from death. Even till now, in the biggest of cities, segregation of garbage, there are severe fines. In Bombay, 50-50,000 rupees fines have been imposed on societies. Yeah, Karnataka is facing the water problem that is there. So now, water is being shut down. Yeah, swimming pools have been shut down. 
So you know, we can't we can't go back into the dark ages. We can't start living in the cave. Because we have to follow that, but now we have to evolve. We have to start getting educated ourselves. So whether we are learning chemistry, whether we are learning history, whether we are learning, you know, whatever subject, environment should be taught to every problem. In fact, 2006, what is the Supreme Court also said that. But well, it's, it's an optional subject in this. I had one last thing I would say that when I was in Dood school, we formulated the EBS curriculum, environment science curriculum, which was a six subject. And then in 2012, that subject was removed. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, Mr. Gomi was there very, very recently. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, environmental science has been removed as a subject from ICSC curriculum. After fighting for it for so long, yeah, some more questions are there. So, it was thank you. So, yeah. We can take two more questions. Uh, we are running out of time. So, two more questions. So, uh, you know, the Inca civilization also went extinct because of water being destroyed. Harappa civilization because of climate change. Do we want to wait to see if it's going to be in Calcutta, Bombay, or Goa, or Goa, or Goa, or Goa, or Goa, or Goa, or Goa? We can't wait for that. We have to think that we have both of time. This can happen and we have to take corrective measures now. We can't wait for the Harappa or the Inca civilization to happen for us to learn. We learn the lessons from that. That's why it's really important. Right? We have to learn from our past mistakes and change that for the future. So, see, Kacha Miti Ka, as I said, if you use the error, again, don't let it get destroyed. Yeah. Sir, I'm a bit of a scientist. You just asked myself. Uh, in Switzerland, I worked with uh, in the past year, I used to cycle around 36 kilometers from my place. So, uh, the road that I used to take was just a road. Uh, we cycles are banned on that road. Like, I was also associated with the cycle. Uh, we used to cycle near New Town. On the north of that, we are facing the East of Paris, New Town in India has actually banned cycles on the those particular roads where. New Town was the only space in Kolkata which had published its first cycle. I would like to know your take on this. Like, we are doing protests all over Kolkata, does the protest against this cycle ban? So, what have you studied? Uh, actually, I am doing PhD in communication journalism. 
either become uh, get into journalism very specifically and write about it or get into politics. No, because the point is that you have to get into a position of power where you will be able to influence the decision or get at least a thousand people who will get strongly into it. Third way, I always say that is the last way is public interest litigation. In a public interest litigation, it's like a surgery. It's just because you sleep, you don't go for a surgery. First, try to engage people. Try to get more people to support that. Go to the local representatives, to elected representative election, are there, make that as an agenda. So, democracy and you know these changes happen when citizens say this is what we want, set government is the idea of it. So, do that. Start cycling trips on your own. Let's see what happens. Na? Bache logo, chode chode bache, grandmothers, grandmothers, so let's take cycling. Karo. Huh? Yeah, take the uh, whatever, Julus, which is are very famous in Bengal, right? So, do cycling Julus. I'm saying you have to use it some way, create a theater or some exercise or talk about. I'm saying use more creative humor. I think you know uh, cartoons and etc. That is a medium that can't be, of course, cases are fight against that also. But use that as a medium to communicate the pain that you are feeling and get more people to come. Approach to your sports authority of India, they will test that in your ideas. Both health, I think health and sports and environment. <laughs> All these three things are connected. Thank you everyone for all those uh, insightful questions. Now I would like to call upon the dais, Professor Sasa Kumar Padi, head of the department environmental studies, to share his remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Arunesh, uh, for inviting me to this session. Uh, Could I give my comments? Uh, I'm so overwhelmed with the talk of, of this panel that it has rightly pointed out that any action on climate or any action on the environment has to start from we and then us and from our home. I mean, uh, it's not that we depend upon the other government to take something and do something, but it, it's to start from us. I and mean, everybody has a, I mean, responsibilities. And um, I mean, uh, uh, because, uh, I mean, uh, they have to be there in the mind that we have to do something for our. <coughs> Sorry. This climate action, as you know, this uh, 1988 started with uh, IPCC formation by Vivian um, Viki and Vimo. Uh, and it, uh, I think it's a very uh, 88 to 2036 years now. So, lots of things happened also in between, uh, and, you know, 2007, the Nobel uh, Prize also given to, uh, I mean, shared between IPCC and um, Professor Albo, otherwise, this is the then Vice President of the uh, United States of Africa. Um, and individually, he also uh, made, uh, I give people the uh, main document, right? So that documentary uh, could give some impact to the whole globe. And the Nobel Committee also thought that it's um, it's a good uh, thing that uh, one should get awareness and uh, and uh, kind of <coughs> problems at that time uh, the world was facing. So uh, considering that, the uh, Nobel Committee gave a uh, Nobel Prize to uh, this IPCC, Intercommunal Panel of Climate Change. And that is even uh, one of our uh, Indian colleagues chair that I just and this uh, person uh, Algo Vice President of yours, they share this. So uh, I mean a lot of things happen, but uh, as we know that uh, it's I mean temperature is in the uh, one can say that it's, I mean coming to the field, it's not any and uh, significant uh, what you call uh, effect as well as positive aspects are concerned. But definitely, yes, uh, I, mean, I mean, it's there in everybody's mind. Everybody knows that everybody talks about this. I mean, if you go to any humanities subject or science subject, everybody talks about global warming, climate change. So everybody knows about it. So what is needed is that I think uh, uh, where um, Mr. Anand's, uh, I mean, uh, this kind of thought-provoking uh, 
method is required to make you more active, proactive in, uh, in that case, so as to achieve uh, I mean, uh, what the comment to learn, but I think uh, I mean, it will be, I mean, what the tweet, I think it will, uh, I mean, have some good uh, positive response as well as different aspects of so this figures again our speaker excellent thought provoking speech which I think uh, everybody should practice we can have it that yes we also used to say in our classroom that when you go to the market have a bag with you don't actually go and uh, um, lifestyle is change is more important than uh, what you call that uh, people being educated for change without changing the lifestyle. So, as far as climate action is concerned, I think one has to do is lifestyle change in lifestyle and uh, more adaptation strategies so that we can adapt. Uh, it's not that it is, uh, tomorrow the temperature is going to um, come down to 15 degrees or 16 degrees. Or 15 degrees. So, the rate at which it is increasing, I think the actions which uh, countries are taking, particularly India is taking lots of actions on this. Uh, we are uh, shifting from carbon to non carbon uh, energy sources, uh, particularly solar, uh, has given a lot of thought um, to solar energy and other uh, renewable energy sources. Uh, so, definitely that. Um, uh, voluntary declaration what we have made in the Paris Agreement that by 2030 our emissions will come down to. So I think we will achieve that, but then as, uh, I mean, as citizen of India, as citizen of the country, we also have responsibility and we also have uh, the role to play in this uh, collective action so that uh, we get a better world of uh, sustainable development. So, this figures I will thank Professor Anand for this talk. And also, I will also thank our organizers for facing the same for organizers as well. Similar for students and support for the ICFS. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and deliberation. Now, to convey the word of thanks, I invite Dr. Nimai Chand Shamasar, Convener, Visit Bharat Cell, and Librarian Vishwam to the last. Good evening, one and all. I don't know how to offer formal word of thanks in this kind of August gathering. But one thing I need to know, and I am very lucky enough, that the prefix of today's speaker's name starting with Anam. In Bengal, it is Anam. And our environment is under crisis. And I am not very frustrated because I know there are many Anam who are there throughout the world to distribute Anam and joy to all of us. You see, by sitting over here, and because of my son, work, I was in the chamber by online. I have not missed a kind of work for him. I found that without having any literary definition, without having any dictionary quotation, without having any good author's books and others, what we actually used to do in our practice by like research and publication life. The topic is too much crucial. Every heat of human civilization is under danger. In many world, and every world, to the extent possible by this one hour, he has rightly catered before all of us. But in another side of coin, I am really bit upset because we are sleeping in acidic mode. Some topics are there. What we discuss and we discuss and why we discuss. 
Some topics are there. What is seminar? Why is seminar? Why is this seminar? But topics are there. Only is only to share what is there, why is there, why is there, and close the door and this over. And beyond that extension, what Mr. Pendant is going to elaborate and throw a signal and symbolic message to all of us. Don't speak, rather, to. I think that's the quote unquote my feelings, my observation. People almost knowing something, those who are sitting over here, and we are discussing many things, mostly on having seen here, signing in here, having Bengal, having Swara. But there are another side of the sinking India, sinking Bengal, sinking world, where 75% of the population is being decided over there. What about their situation? How they are getting this honor? So we have to bring to them this kind of honor with the legacy of Buddha Chekhov. And yes, this is the Vishwabharati Vixit Bhavasel, and we have our proud center which is very soon going to be department that is the MC today, and we are waiting to listen to DJs, Department of Government and Mass Communication. So the moment when most of are getting this kind of figure, I must say, in my life, she just tried to bring it that Bangalore will be much better and much better. With a single expenditure, we are using even three more. Because this patient also don't have this kind of you know, financial stability to invite some things from outside to organize this kind of valuable talks. So, at the very outset, let me extend my regards the interest agents in honor of them, my Mosumiri, Dr. Mosum Bhattacharya, who is supposed to be the leader of the CJMC and very near source of our visit for ourselves as one of the direct members for giving this opportunity to support the community and world community because. This has been already captured in June video conferencing tool. And if Mr. Anand allowed, this lecture will be uploaded in the YouTube channel, which will be live in April tomorrow. And throughout the world, we will we get some kind of voice from Mr. Anand to protect the environment and climate impacts. So, most of it is thank you. Then, if I have not paid my homage and thanks to Mr. Anand, this Session will not be a complicated one, and time and time conversation will not make any sense. So I think Mr. Pendakar will come once again and repeatedly to educate us, to orient us, to make this campus more user friendly, eco friendly, and throughout our principles, we need to make our world and Bengal and India to make environment friendly. So thank you, sir, for your coming, and we are very keen to have you next time. In the library and in the visuality and CTMC in particular. Thank you. Thanks is also due to our colleagues. Yes, though he is professor and head of environmental science, but I know that area of Prakarta is also not limited and confined in the visual community. He is a figure who is taking care of different governments and NGOs, this kind of environmental activities are goals, and his knowledge in his field expertise is very praiseworthy. And because of this visuality, relativity, without any formality, one day I call in front of Mosuliti, both of the cities I am in. And today morning, to chair this session, is taking news from me that with a reminder, since this external heat wave, our working hour is being confined, will it be happen? Or in fact, customized it will be given in like that. So thank you, sir, for your coming over here and giving over this external heat wave time. And whatever signal you message you are giving before us, that is a landmark to our session. Thank you, sir. And thanks are due to our, our vice chancellor for the Sunday one only, and our register, my beloved friends, Mr. Ashok Kumar Mahato. They are the administrative source. Without their permission, it was next impossible to be here to state. And this audience mostly, our senior. Teacher Vinanda is there from Sikhoshadam to listen on the topic, and from morning he is here to listen to the entire session. So, thank you, Vinanda, you are there to give us a kind of energy and encouragement for taking next action of the Mission Bhagavad Sir. And this, is, this, is, this was not the Mission program or national program, one international, I mean, Bangladesh scholar. 
she was here to make money help from all of them because of her appointment with the head, she was there just maybe a few minutes back. So she was here. So in one way, because of her presence, I can say this seminar or this discussion was in front of them. Right? And she said to me, by this party, Imagina, she was the best money. I don't know what kind of idea is enough to carry this kind of people for each session. So thanks to Britannia for her elaborate words. At this audience, mostly confined with students and scholars of, you know, Dhanazana's communication and faculty, my brotherly honor. So, you all are making the days 100 out of 100. You are knowing how to adapt the change situation. In the formal session, you are with your silver jubilee celebration. After taking lunch and others, you are coming over here to take up the Vichit Paro Cell program. So thank you all. Thank you for your unconditional cooperation and support to make this program a success. And if I am not paying thanks to all the members of my Vichit Paro Cell, I would have wrong from my side. And if I am not paying thanks to my colleagues, Dr. Vishnu, Shomo, Udi, and Buddha, in this room, and outside the room, there are many people who are helping me to have this program. So thank you all for your patience for listening. And I think also that ends well and every good thing comes to an end. So thank you very much. Good evening. As we delve into discussions about diversity, conservation, climate action, and the pivotal role of youth, let us remember that each one of us has a role to play. Let us harness our collective energy, uh, creativity, and passion to create a world where sustainability is not just a goal, but a way of life, keeping in mind the perspectives of fixing the other towards sustainability and environmental conservation and activity. Thank you.